My colleagues, how are you today? Good? Yes? ¿Cómo les ha ido en la semana? ¿Hemos podido aplicar algo de lo que hemos venido aprendiendo estos días? Algo de cómo empezamos con los skills, cómo introducir los skills en nuestra clase, cómo nos sirve Good Evening. Buenas tardes, Carmen. Buenas tardes, Delia, Janet, Beatriz. Muchas gracias por saludar. ¿Cómo están, chicos? ¿Qué tal la semana? ¿Qué tal el cierre ya de notas? Estamos a unas semanas de irnos de vacaciones. Pesado, ¿verdad? Esta semana creo que es la semana que los profesores trabajamos más de lo que trabajamos todo el año. Los finales de bimestre y el cierre de año, sí. Es bastante, bastante pesada la última semanita con cierre de notas, comentarios los que somos tutores y todo lo que se nos viene. Pero bonito porque nos tocan dos semanitas de vacaciones para relajarnos un ratito. A ver, entonces, el día de hoy Vamos a trabajar, hemos venido trabajando ya con lo que es listening, speaking, y ahora vamos a entrar a lo que es teaching, reading, ¿ok? Para esto, este, vamos a ver un video de lo que es el examen TESO. ¿Conocen ustedes lo que es el examen TESO? ¿Han escuchado de él? ¿Han escuchado lo que es el examen TESO? No, bueno, es un examen que mide la competencia de los profesores de inglés. Así como nosotros medimos nuestra competencia lingüística con el FC, el TKT, CAE, CAE, CPE, que son los exámenes de Cambridge para competencia lingüística, el examen TESO es el Teaching English a Second Language Test, ¿ok? Es... El examen que se da para medir la capacidad del docente de poder enseñar inglés. Entonces, ahora, ¿qué nos dice este examen? Nos da ciertas pautas cuando enseñamos los skills. Y nos dice ciertos principios de cómo abordar cada uno de ellos para que para nuestro alumno sea más fácil la, el aprendizaje del mismo. ¿Ok? Ahora, nosotros hemos hablado de speaking y de las diferentes dinámicas que debemos utilizar para poder hacer que el alumno se compenetre o se sienta en un ambiente propicio para poder aprender. Porque speaking, habíamos acordado que era uno de los skills más difíciles porque teníamos que vencer, especialmente en adultos, la vergüenza y el tema de pensar que están diciendo algo malo. Ahora, en el caso de listening, tenemos que tratar de romper ese esquema de la diferencia de sonidos entre la lengua madre, porque sí, nuestro cerebro desde que es muy pequeño tiene la capacidad de diferenciar los sonidos de la lengua natal de las lenguas extranjeras o segundas lenguas. Y ahora vamos a ver qué dificultades podemos encontrar nosotros a la hora de enseñar reading y cómo debemos manejarlas, ¿ok? Cómo debemos abordarlo y qué actividades nos ayudan para que esto sea mejor para nuestros alumnos. Now, let's... Here it is. Today we're going to have the lesson three, teaching reading. Okay, and we are going to finish with writing. That will be session number four. Ahora, recuerden por favor que para que ustedes puedan recibir su certificación, los que están interesados deben tener las actividades en el Classroom al día. Estas actividades tienen una fecha de, de entrega, tienen fechas límite. Por eso es que algunos de, de los alumnos me han escrito, me dicen que ya no pueden subirlas efectivamente, porque lamentablemente ya pasó la fecha. Entonces, yo lo voy a abrir el día de hoy, voy a dar unos días extra para que ustedes puedan subir sus actividades, pero lo importante es que estas estén listas para la fecha de, que se establece en el Classroom. Otra cosa es el tema de la asistencia, ustedes saben de que el link se pasa al final de la clase y también se pasa por el chat grupal de WhatsApp, ¿ok? la asistencia de las actividades y el examen final, que lo vamos a tener ya luego de la última clase, son muy importantes para que ustedes puedan certificarse. El examen final va a ser un cuestionario sí que va a cubrir las cuatro sesiones que hemos tenido. Ustedes tienen la ventaja que tienen dentro del Classroom las grabaciones de, estos, de estas clases. Si gustan, pueden volver a verlas, pueden revisarlas, pueden tomar nota de lo que les pareció más importante, ya que no toda la información a veces se encuentra en el PowerPoint, porque muchas veces desarrollamos las ideas de manera adicional y eso hace de que tengamos más información a veces que la que estaba establecida en el PPT. Entonces, 
Entonces, un momentito. Ok, como les decía, luego de la sesión número 4, vamos a tener el examen que va a ser en un Google Forms y luego de eso ustedes van a poder recibir su certificación ya de acuerdo a lo que les indiquen por, por medio del área pedagógica. Esta información se las van a dar en la sesión 4. Así que si pueden, esta semana den una revisada a las clases que hemos tenido previamente, chequen los videos y vean si hay algo que se les pasó, algo que es importante, algo que quieran tomar nota. Ok, entonces... Seguimos. Didácticas de la enseñanza de English Skills. El día de hoy tenemos Teaching Reading. Ok. Uh, you're going, uh, I'm sorry if I speak like a little more um, slow or low because I have a flu. So actually I am like recovering for this flu. I hate the weather change. It always happens this to me. Okay, what's the purpose today of our lesson? To establish the importance of teaching reading to students, to recognize the, different be the difference between teaching reading and text analysis, to explore reading strategies and their use in their second language classroom, to apply the reading strategies to a reading passage, to analyze the importance of reading aloud in the classroom. Okay, why is it important to read aloud? Maybe you can tell me, Miss, but I am reading. Yes, but remember that we need to practice also, not only with speaking, the fluency and vocabulary that you're going to get, okay? And this, in reading, we're going to work these two, and it's going to help us to improve our vocabulary or to improve our pronunciation. So it is important reading out loud. It's going to give us fluency too. That why do we teach reading? Okay, I am going to open the chat so you can tell me in your own words why do you think it's important for us to teach reading? Why do we teach reading? Come on, write in the chat why do you think that we teach reading? To increase vocabulary, very good, Katy, excellent. Why else? How, why do you think it's important for us to teach reading? To learn, I can learn about a culture, very good. To set up a context, excellent. To get a global understanding, good. What else, what else? What else can we say that why is it important to teach reading? Practice pronunciation, very good, because in one way, improve vocabulary to get some specific information, good. Increase vocabulary to teach phrasal verbs, good, to teach grammar, actually. To learn reading comprehension and to comprehend better the life situations, very good, okay. Excellent, yes. Actually, in this case, we have a lot of things that reading is going to help us do. For example, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, fluency, getting information. A lot of things that are going to be very useful for our, our students. Improves communication and language skills to introduce grammar. Good, yes. Actually, all the answers are correct. All the answers are correct. Because we do need and we can use reading to increase our vocabulary, to learn some, some grammar, to do a lot of things that for our students are going to be very useful, okay? To get fluency and reading loudly, very good. Yes, fluency is very important. So when you read out, out loud, you are forced to, to improve your fluency so others can understand what you're reading. Nice, okay. This is something that we need to be aware of when we teach reading, okay? This is the process that we're going to have 
before or when planning our class. Remember that planning our class is very important. We need to plan because we need to set a goal for each class. It's not the same that I teach reading. For example, I, I, don't, I don't want to do anything today. I'm going to give them a text and they are going to answer some questions. Where is my goal? What are they what are they learning? What do I want them to do? I need to set the goal so my students can know what I expect for, from them, what they need to do, what they're expected to learn. It. Okay, so what is what is it we expect our students to learn? The outcomes of the reading. Okay. How will we know when they have learned it? the assessment, what are they going to do? What task are we going to give them? How will we respond when some students don't learn it? The intervention, how, I'm how am I going to help them if they don't understand? How will we respond when students already know it? What am I going to do if a student has more level of English than others and he finished his or her task early? earlier than the others, what should I do in this situation, okay? These are things that I need to be aware of. I need to know what I'm going to do in each kind of, in each way or each kind of them, because I need to know what is my goal, what do I expect from my students, how to do when a student is not following the lead, and what should I do if a students already know the things that I'm giving them. Remember that we students are not going to stay we as students are not going to be in a class or we are not going to listen to a teacher, at least that we think that she or he can give us something that we don't have. In this case, knowledge. Okay, so types of reading. What types of reading do we have? Okay, intensive reading. Students focus on the linguistic or semantic details of a passage. Extensive, when we do a skimming, a scanning, or all kinds of pleasure reading, okay? Extensive reading is when I read a book, for example, in my leisure hours. When I, what I want to do when I'm free, if I enjoy the novels, if I enjoy the horror books, that's extensive reading. Intensive is what I, at one, when I intend to learn something or get out of this book or this information or, or this text, okay? Okay, to help them. How is reading going to help my students? How is reading going to help my students? It's going to learn, there, it's going to help them learn the language. We already said that it's going to help with grammar, with vocabulary, with a lot of things that they need to know to learn how to speak in English. To read for information. When I want them to get information from the text that I'm giving, a phone number, an address, or any information that I want them to have. And also, as one of you said in the chat, to read for cultural knowledge and awareness, okay? It's going to help me to learn about new cultures. It's going to help me to learn about new things, okay? It's going to help me in different ways so I can know about other countries, other people, other cultures, etc. Okay, guys, so here, I am going to play the video that I told you, and it has to do a lot with the TESOL exam, okay? How to teach reading in this case. So please pay attention and let's start. In this section, I want to talk about reading comprehension skills and how to help our students to improve reading. But first, 
I have a question for you. When you read an ad, the paper, a book, a textbook, a shopping list, do you read them the same way? For example, this morning you read the news before going to work. Did you read every piece of news in detail? Did you just read the headlines? Did any headline catch your attention so that you wanted to read the full article? When we read a text, we don't always read it the same way. Sometimes we pay attention to details, and other times we just search for keywords to have an idea of what we're reading about. Our students, of course, do the same thing in their own language. What is reading comprehension then? And how can we help our students develop and improve their reading skills? In this video, we'll introduce five critical techniques to help students improve their reading. Let's start by considering new vocabulary. Vocabulary plays an important role when developing reading skills. Do not pre-teach all the new vocabulary in a text. Instead, have your students guess the meaning of new words, taking context into account. Help students understand the meaning through keywords in the paragraph. Pair your students up and have them work out the meaning of words together. Give them a matching activity. Match the word to its definition or synonym or antonym or picture. Another point to consider is to differentiate reading aloud from reading comprehension. Avoid reading the text aloud. Remember, you're teaching a reading comprehension lesson, not a listening one. Set up a task as questions, true or false statements, before the students start to read, so that they're reading for something. In that way, reading has a purpose. To have students read aloud is good when we want to check pronunciation, sentence stress, or fluency. Reading aloud can be done after reading comprehension tasks are finished. Besides, when students concentrate on reading aloud, they do not pay attention to the content, but the pronunciation. So remember, reading aloud is not reading comprehension. These two strategies have different purposes. Don't tell your students to read aloud when your purpose is in fact to understand the context of the text. Let's consider other aspects of reading comprehension and how this skill can be integrated with other skills. Introduce the theme of the text first. This is a good way of exploiting a text. Introducing the topic arouses the student's interest. It helps to pre-teach some vocabulary and it sets the mood for reading. It integrates speaking and listening. Follow-up activities. After reading comprehension tasks, make sure you end the lesson with interesting activities that integrate the reading skills with other skills. For example, with speaking, you can have the students debate or discuss a story. In writing, the students can summarize a story or write a letter. Set a task for homework to review vocabulary, or play a vocabulary game. And one last piece of advice. Do not be afraid of using authentic materials. It's true that structures and vocabulary found in authentic material are more complex and difficult, but they are authentic. This is the material English native speakers read, and we want our students to learn real life and meaningful vocabulary. If the level of the students is low, you can still have them read authentic material. The key for comprehension in this case is to make the tasks easy and simple. Authentic material can include music lyrics, poetry, ads, letters, magazine articles, or newspaper articles. Do not be afraid to use authentic material with low levels. Create easy and simple tasks. In the TESOL courses at ONTESOL, you will learn how to effectively incorporate reading skills into your lesson plans. Okay, guys. In case you want to see this again and take notes, this is going to be in your classroom too, okay? This is going to be in our classroom for you to check any time that you want. Now, in this case, what are they telling us about reading? What they say about reading? That it's only a skill, we can mix it with the other skills. How can we use it? What is it good for? Come on, I read you in the chat. 
Why is this good for you or for your students? How is reading going to help us if we mix it with other activities or we just uh, teach reading and nothing else? Come on, I read you. Give me your personal opinion. There is no bad opinion. As I said, it's personal opinion. Come on, do you think it's good mixing reading with other skills? Maybe teaching reading alone will be better. How do you think is the best way of teaching reading? Come on. Reading skill can be mixed with other skills. Very good. Thank you, Irma. Reading can be mixed with other skills. Very good because it's a complement. Excellent in concept to all subjects. Very good. So you think it's better teaching English mixing it with other skills or alone it's important to set a task so students know what to do we can use two different skills very good excellent very good guys great okay let's continue now Reading to learn the language. Reading to learn the language. Oh, I have two more notes. It's important to set a task so the students, to the students, good, give them a purpose. Excellent. Yes, this is very important all the time. You need to set a task for, for your students. If you don't set a task, your students are not going to be aware of what they need to learn. And if you don't know what you need to learn, you're not going to learn. You're going to get confused. So, reading to learn the language. Give the students a, via, a variety of materials to read. Help them, helps them absorb vocabulary, grammar, sentence structure. Students thus gain a more complete picture of the ways in which the elements of the language work together to convey meaning. When we want students to learn, and they read to learn the language. Here is where, we're where we are going to learn the grammar, the vocabulary, the context that we're using, okay? Because we're giving them vocabulary, grammar, and sentence structure for them to understand what they need to say. It's an example of how they need to do it. So it is going to be very useful in the case of the ones that are starting how to speak, for example, or how to write sentences, because they're going to be able to watch an exact example about this. Okay. Reading cultural knowledge awareness. Reading everyday materials that are designed for native speakers can give students insight to the lifestyle and worldviews of the people whose language they are studying. As the guy in the video said, for example, yes, we need, and this is very important, I have another message. If you're looking to have the students focus on reading comprehension, then the students should read aloud. Yes, it's going to be helpful in the case of young learners, especially because they are learning the language. But in the case of adults or teenagers in advanced level, maybe silent reading will be better for them because it's going to let them focus on what they need to learn. Okay, reading everyday materials that are designed for native speakers. In this case, I have heard both sides. For example, someone told me once that, yes, miss, but when we talk about readings for native, they are too difficult. Yes, we need to know, we need to be aware of the exact level of our students so we can handle the level of the readings that we give them. For example, if I have uh, beginners, I am not going to let them read, I don't know, El Retrato de Dorian Gray, for example, because the kind of speaking that they have is very difficult even for advanced students. So in this case, we need to know and sort the readings in a way that our students are going to be able to understand because it's going to be according of their knowledge and the level that they have. So they are going to be able to get the information that we need, okay?
reading. Oh, we already passed through this. No. Okay. Five principles to teach reading. Okay. The five principles to teach reading. In this case, teachers should have a clear objective to guide the reading lesson planning. Okay. Yes, as I said, and I said every class, we need to have our class planned. It's not the same, for example, for us. That if we go to a class and we don't know what are we going to do, because it's going to be a waste, a waste of time for us, it's going to be more difficult for us to control our class because when our students don't know what to do, they get distracted, their behavior is not the best. So it's going to be worse for us in kind of behavior it's going to be worse for us in ways of what they need to do to set the goal, to let, let them know about the grammar, etc. Teachers must activate students' knowledge about the topic of the text they are about to read. Yes, in this case, we do need to have the context of what we're reading. In this case, for example, it helps me a lot when uh, regarding on my or my students, for example, when I have a reading, especially the ones from the book that sometimes are not very interesting, I start making them guess. They, they start creating the story in their heads. What do they expect to happen? Why do they expect, uh, what do they expect to the characters to, to do or to be, for example? based only on one picture, based only on one paragraph, or it's skimming the text, these kind of things are going to make them more interested on what they're going to read because they're going to want to find out what they're doing, okay? Or what's the text about, what's the reading about. Reading is a great opportunity for vocabulary and grammar. Practice should contribute to a better understanding of the text. So as we said, it's very important. It's going to be very helpful for us to learn about grammar and vocabulary, okay? In this case, we are going to be able to introduce grammar or to lend them or to let them, sorry about my, my pronunciation, but the flu is killing me here. Okay, the, it's going to be better for us to teach them vocabulary using the context. And if they see the word, in a sentence, they're going to be able to understand the meaning of this word without using a translation. And that's better sometimes because we, remember that when we translate, it's not that our students are not going to learn, but they are going to take more time learning, okay? It's going to be more difficult for them. And they're not going to feel good because they have to think in Spanish, go to English and try to speak this in English. It's not easy, okay? So let's try to make them have the meanings in their head in English. Reading should be graded according to students' level of English. This is very important. I need to know the level of my students because I can give them a novel if they are starting, if they are beginners, if they are young learners. First, they are not going to be able to do it. Second, they are not going to be interested because they are small, they are young, they are not going to be in the mood of reading a book of 300, 300 pages. They are going to get bored, okay? In the case, especially of young learners, we need to have a lot of things and that we need to have in mind when we teach reading to young learners. Remember that they have just learned how to read in Spanish. So for them, it's not easy. They are going to have, the reading is going to be a slow, more a slow. Okay, too slowly sometimes. Don't have enough vocabulary. They don't know the vocabulary because they are just starting to learn. They are beginners in the language, okay? They sometimes get frustrated because they can't do whatever they want to do. They're not going to be able to do it. And sometimes they get frustrated and they're not going to want to keep trying because they don't feel good, okay? They get bored a lot. And this is something that happens a lot with young learners. They get bored when the reading is not something that catches their attention. They don't want to know. They, they don't care about what they're reading. They don't care about the topic, so they don't focus. And, well, they would rather be watching TV or playing video games. Now we struggle with that. Before it was easier, but now, especially with second, first, or third grade, 
it's more hard for us to fight against the TV or the video games or the streamings. Because for example, I have a son, he's seven years old, eight now, and he loves to watch videos in YouTube about this, uh, these play uh, gamers that are like playing video games and telling them how to win. So he prefers obviously be watching his video that's reading a book, but I am trying to convince him that reading a book is going to be better than watching a gamer. So those things we need to be aware and we need to be very, very attached to this because we need to know how to plan our lesson using this information that we already have, okay? As it for major, as is it a major problem in L1 young learners, the challenge to involve and motivate students in reading is even bigger. The thing is that as they are starting, they are beginners, they don't know a lot of vocabulary and they don't understand most of the things that we are telling them. Because if we are speaking in English all the time, they are not always aware of what we're saying. They don't understand most of the words that we're using. So in this case, the problem is that if they, they, if they get lost during the class, they are going to be bored and they're not going to focus, okay? What are the reading strategies that a teacher can use while teaching reading. Okay, guys, for this, we are going to use the chat. Tell me, what are the best strategies that you think you can use while teaching English, while teaching reading? Scheming, Irma, very good, thank you. What else? Interest in reading according to age, very good. Scanning, underline the words, very good. Daniela, use that a lot with teenagers. Identify the purpose. Yes, they need to know the purpose. What else? What do you think is the best strategy while we are teaching English, reading to, to young learners, teenagers, or adults? Come on. We are almost 50 and I only have five comments okay use visual aids very good yes especially for young learners it's very good matching vocabulary good predictions As students get involved in the story good predictions excellent to guess the topic getting a brainstorm through a photo good videos highlight main ideas Gist, very good, Rudy, excellent. Reviews according to the views according to the context. Good, create a final to the story. Yeah, yes, no questions. Excellent, very good. Most of these are metacognitive questions, right? How, what did you learn? How did you learn it? What happened? What happened to the character? What will you do if you were in the same situation? Read and correct the concepts. The concept, very good. It's something with songs and interactive games. The text must catch the attention of the students. Yes, actually the other day I was in a class with a student that it's an adult. And the reading that I got was from Harry Potter because it's mm, certain her, her age. And she told me that she didn't like Harry Potter. So that class actually was not enjoyable for her because she didn't like the topic. I thought that she would like it because it, it's almost her age when these movies were like in, in the chart, in, in the movie chart. But she told me that she never cared about this. So it wasn't a class that she enjoyed because of this, because the topic was not interesting for her. But for example, I use a, an article about medicine, about the last vaccines. And she was very excited because she is a biologist. So she was like, amazed about the things that we were reading and discussing and she was telling me how vaccines work and how uh, now they are better than before and why and things that most people don't know in my case for example I'm a teacher I have nothing to do with medicine and she was telling me how is her work like in these laboratories and it was very interesting for me and for her 
So in this case, we need to be sure that the topic is interesting for our students and also for us to be able to discuss because if we're not enjoying what we're teaching, our students are able to know this. They realize, they actually realize when we are not interested or when we don't know what we're teaching. So that's why teachers, we need to prepare a lot. Vocabulary, rewrite, rewrite as a model, they read very good. Paraphrasing, describe the pictures, guessing. Very good. Yes, create stories with your students using the vocabulary they already know and incorporate new vocabulary. Very good. Yes, this is going to be very helpful, actually. Very, very helpful. Okay. So, in this case, we are going to see the following strategies. Okay. Previewing. A lot of you mentioned this in the chat, actually because you told me about like scheming and getting some words or vocabulary words so they know what's the context of the story. Predicting, scheming and scanning, guessing from context and paraphrasing. In the case of previewing, predicting, scheming or scanning is going to be before we read, okay? Because we're going to try to make them focus on what is going to happen in the reading. Guessing from context. This also is going to catch their attention because they are going to guess what they think is going to happen and they are going to make a parallel with what actually happened in the story. Paraphrasing, this goes for the end of the reading because we are going to stop after some paragraphs or pages so we get to know exactly what our students have learned, okay? What they have learned what they, what they understood about the reading and if it's okay or not, or we need to correct. Remember that a very important part of the reading process is the feedback that we can give so, to some students that are not following the lead as we expect, okay? It is going to happen that some of our students are not going to be able to actually understand all the things that the story is saying or all the instructions that we're giving them. So in this case, we need them to know that we are there to support their knowledge, to support their learning. So in that case, they're going to feel comfortable on asking and they're not going to go like wondering what they have to learn or maybe even not knowing what they learn. So not caring at all about what they were supposed to learn. Previewing. Reviewing title sections, headings, and photo captions to get sense of the structure and okay, the structure and context of reading selection. In this case, we are going to read like for young learners the use of reviews stories. Yes, very good. Actually, previewing. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. As I said, when you review titles, headings, and photos, captions to get a sense of the structure and context of the reading selection. With this, with the title, the subtitles, the headings, you are going to be able to give them an idea about what you're actually uh, trying to teach them through the story, through this, through this story. So in this case, it's going to be better for them to acknowledge using their imagination to get the context of this story or this text, okay? This is going to be a motivator because you are going to make them curious about what you're teaching. Also, we're going to use predicting, for example, using knowledge to a subject matter to make predictions about content and vocabulary and check comprehension. So in this case, you're going to, uh, based on the title or the headings that they have seen, you are going to make them like predict what is going to happen in the story. What do you think it's going to happen to the characters or what's the story about or how it's going to be the ending of the story? For example, sometimes we get endings that we don't like and we can use that to paraphrase, okay? We can use that to paraphrase. And also in that case, we're going to, we are also going to be able to use it to know what they get or what they got from this reading, 
Okay, guys, skimming and scanning using a quick survey for the text to get the main idea, identify structure, and confirm or question predictions. Okay, in this case, we review the headings and the titles. They said what they think. We predict what is going to happen. Okay, in this case, the in the text, and then we're going to skim and scan for vocabulary words for sentences, for a lot of things that are going to help them get some information from this text, okay? It's going to help them to get the information from the text. They are not getting the whole idea of the text because they haven't read it, but at least they are going to know what is it about. Guessing from context, using prior knowledge, of subject and the ideas in the text as close of the meaning of unknown words instead of stopping to look them up. Okay, what's the context that develop? Here we can use some questions like, what would you do if you were in that situation? What do you think will happen if she do this? Or why do you think this happened to her? How did you get to this conclusion? And at the end, as I said, paraphrasing, stopping at the end of a section to check comprehension by resorting the information and ideas in the test. In this case, you are going to use paraphrasing to check the knowledge and the information that they got from this paragraph, sentence, or actually a text, and how much they did actually understand about what they're reading, okay? Okay, incorporating effective reading strategies into the second language classroom. For this activity, I am going to give you the link of a Jamboard. In this Jamboard, you are going to be able to see the first part. Wait a minute. Oh. In the first page, you are going to give me strategies, effective strategies that you think are good for post reading in page number three. While reading in page number two and before reading in page number one, you are going to create a note and you are going to give me an idea of strategies that you think are good for teaching before reading, while reading, and post reading, okay? For this, I am going to give you five minutes and you are going to be able to write your notes. Here is the chat. Okay, the link is on the chat. Come on, guys. I am waiting for your post -its. I can see that a lot of you are connected. Come on. Give me ideas. Use a, create a note. Come on. One for each page, from page one, two, and three.
Oh, sorry, I was muted. Okay, you can write down the keywords in while reading. Okay, very good. Before reading to active their schemata, linking the before knowledge with a new one. Very good, Rudy. Thank you very much. Come on, guys. Let's see. I want to see. Okay, I all I also have in the first one predictions. Show pictures and create some predictions. Highlight the new words. Give to the students some words about the reading and talk about that. Brainstorming predictions to related to the title before letting activate the schemata and encouraging prediction. Very good. While reading, get some vocabulary words. Read and find new words or phrases. Guess the meaning of new vocabulary. Think of words similar to those in the text. Teacher reads aloud and say the word in a different tone. Use gestures and good voice. Underline the vocabulary. Very good. Okay. And number three, four, post reading. Use information, write a new paragraph based on the reading. Ask students which part, which part they would like to change. Write out the story and making sentences, changing the ending. Very good. Come on, guys. We are more than 50 now in the in the room so i only have six notes come on you can do it i want to read your opinions remember that the notes are anonymous so i don't have any way to know who wrote it don't be shy come on Come on, everybody, hurry up. Good, change the text to something similar that you have read. Ask questions, ask the students about main ideas, ask for their opinions, change the ending. This is a very good one. Retelling and summarizing, ask students which part they want to change through or false sentences. Very good. Students can make maps to show what they have got from the text. Very good. I think teachers can write because they don't have the app downloaded in their mobile phone as me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't worry. But you can use the chat. I am also reading the messages on the chat. Don't worry. Guessing about the reading through pictures. Very good. Excellent. Paraphrase work on a productive skill. Good. Paraphrasing. Excellent. Okay. I am going to continue reading the notes in case they still come, but we are going to continue with our class. Okay. So if not, we're not going to be able to finish on time. Okay. In this case, for example, to encourage my students, the teacher can develop simple exercises to elicit information target, via tar targeted strategies. These exercises can be divided by the stage of reading in which they occur into, okay? Pre-reading activities, while reading activities, as we were talking, and post-reading activities. In this case, why do we split the reading in three times? Because in the first one, we're going to get their previous knowledge, okay? We're going to make them connect with what we're doing. While reading, they're going to do some things for them to be able to understand better what they're reading. And post-reading activities will be about the, how much of the information they got after reading, okay? Oh, ok, eh, un paréntesis, queridos colegas, eh, les han puesto ahorita el, 
el link del Classroom y también el código de ingreso para los que no se hayan conectado aún y puedan completar sus actividades para que puedan recibir su certificación. Ok, let's see. Before reading, activate the access prior knowledge to prepare students for comprehension of text. Determine the purpose from, for reading. Ok, review vocabulary, concepts, etc. and make predictions. In this case, we need to activate the prior knowledge so they connect. Because if they feel that they don't know the topic that we're going to talk about, they are not going to be focused. They are not going to be interested in it, okay? During, model and use strategies to help students make connections to understand. Hi, Jesus, how are you? Infer, predict, reread, reason, using evidence, analyze features. After reading, help students show what they know. Retell, reflect, summarize, explain, conclude, synthesize, evaluate, okay? We are during, we need them to predict, to infer, to read again, to change some, some things, to underline the vocabulary words that they don't know. For them to be focused on the process of reading. And after, we need to know, we need to get how many of this information they have, okay? How many of this information they got at the end. So that's why we need, we have these kind of things that are going to be helpful for us to measure how many of this information they are getting, okay? Encourage students to self-evaluate their learning. Did I understand? Why is this very important? Why is this so important? Because sometimes the students are going to tell us, yes, I understand, or they're going to be able to find information that we want them to find because it's there. But the thing is that if we actually don't make them think if they did understand, they're not going to be able to know if they are actually learning. And that, that's why we need to have a process in reading. Reading is not only, okay, I will give you the text and then I'm going, I'm going to give you some questions. For example, let me show you something that I have here. A minute. Okay. Wait, look at this. For example, in this case, here there is a reading. In this case, it's for beginners to A1 to A2, and it's a, a cross cultures skills work. Okay, here you can see that they have the reading, and we can also use previous knowledge. In this exercise, for example, you can see, look at the pictures and listen to music, what is happening. They are going to show you the music and then you are going to be able to know or guess what is happening in this, in, this, in this story. If I see my students here, I can say, okay, what do you see here? What do you think is going on? What do you think the story is about? They're going to tell me about a match, about a football Americano, about sports, about a college, about a lot of things. They're going to start brainstorming. So they're going to be interested in what they're going to read. After this, I can use, before the exercises, I need to present the vocabulary. Okay? I need to have the vocabulary. In this case, the vocabulary is not new, so it is not here. But most of the time here, they have a dictionary. So in this case, after that, after reading and analyzing the reading together, we can start with the exercises, okay? But the thing is that we need to introduce the vocabulary. We need to introduce the topic that we're going to talk about. For example, what happens about a person that no, don't know anything about football Americano? What is going to happen with this, with this person? It's going to be interest in what we're reading or what we're doing, or she's just going to say, oh, 
I don't, I don't understand. I don't know what is it. Do you think she will be or he will be interested in what we're doing? No, right? Yes, it's going to be bored. Not at all. It's going to be bored. Boring for him or her. Exactly. And that happens a lot because sometimes we guess, and this goes for the boys. I know that I have less boys than girls here, but have you realized that here in Peru, especially when you are a man, you are supposed to know about soccer and everybody assumes that you know about football. Even if you don't like it, they don't care. They assume that you know and that you play football just because you're a guy. What do you think, guys? True or not true? Yes, right? Yes, awful. That's true. And it happens, for example, my husband doesn't like soccer at all. And he doesn't know how to play it either. He prefers other kind of sports like surfing, but he knows nothing about soccer. And everybody assumes that as he's a, a guy, he needs to know about soccer. So most of the time when he meets new people, they start talking about football and la selección and the World Cup and how we didn't enter and things like that. And he's like, lost in the way and he's obviously not interested in what they're saying so if they try to have this conversation to connect with him it's not a good idea because he knows nothing about soccer yeah most of the guys does it's like a culture but there are guys i found one the ironic part of this is that i do love soccer and i play soccer so when I, when we started dating, it was like like weird because I did know about soccer and he knows nothing about soccer. Now we got into the middle of it and we agree that we are like this. So yeah, exactly. And it happens the same with girls and dolls or cooking. Because you are a woman, you're supposed to know how to cook. It's not true. I don't know how to cook. I have tried, but... I'm not good at it. I'm better teaching, I know. Yes, so that's why I do. Because actually, I don't know how to cook, but people think or assume that I know how to cook and they start giving me recipes and I am like, okay, thank you so much. Talk to him because he's the one that comes into the kitchen. <laughs> teaching how to cook, maybe, yes. Maybe I will try someday. Not now. I, I'm sticking with English just for now. Okay, so in this case, as I was saying, we need to find things that are going to be interesting for our students. Not only be because we know things about boys and girls or men and women, we need to know what they actually like or interest in, okay? Okay. Decide which reading strategy can best be used in each stage. We did the Jamboard before we got the reading, okay? Now, in the chat, you are going to tell me if you stick with this and you think that is the best way of learning in previous reading, while reading, or post-reading. Come on, give me three strategies in the chat, number one, two, three, one for before reading, the other one for while reading, and the third one for post reading after we have discussed the situation. Come on, I read you. Come on, guys, I read you. Give me some strategies after we discuss them. How do you think it's the best way of or activity before reading, while reading, and post reading? Write it in the chat. One, two, three. Come on. All together, please. So I can read them all together, okay?
Okay, see. Oh, before comprehension. Very good. Thank you, Janet. Comprehension means like introducing vocabulary, for example, right? Or giving them the context or predictions. Before Sonia, motivation. Very good. Excellent. Thank you so much. Motivation is very important are for them to be interested in what they are going to read. Because actually reading can be very boring if you're not interested in what you're reading. If I give you a book about pedag pedagogical uh, discoveries, you're going to be interested because you like teaching. But what happens if I give you, I don't know, chemistry? You're not going to be that interested, right? In further topics in the pictures, underline principal ideas, main ideas, and summarize the story. Very good, Daniel. Excellent. Before, underline new words. Excellent. What else? What else? What else? Come on. I'm sorry. Uh, I hate the weather change. I can't deal with warm, cold, warm, cold gives me the flu okay very good since reading interactive they must decode the context before talk about what you see context during find the words and vocabulary after create a new paragraph with their own words excellent create a new paragraph change the ending change the character change what happens whatever you want excellent while an attractive reading to catch the interest of the students and they join the they Make sure that they enjoy what they're reading. Very good. What else? Before, brainstorming, excellent. During, taking notes the te of the text. Okay, after, self-testing. Take notes in the while reading. Very good. Take notes. Excellent. Actually, I have read a lot about taking notes. So yes, it's good. Underline is also good. Wow, match the pairs, choose the best option. Post reading, write a summary using new vocabulary. Very good. Okay. Before, meet the author of the reading. Yeah, that will be actually a very good thing to do. Not always we have the, the luck, but... In this case, if you know who wrote it and you can have the context of the story, you're going to be more interested in reading it. Yeah, that's true. Create a new story. Yes, Irma, very good. That's very good. Actually, creating new paragraphs, changing the what happened with the characters, change the ending of the story are very good things, actually. Before reading. Okay. Pre-reading activities. Introduce students to a particular text, elicit or provide appropriate background knowledge, arouse their interest, you need to motivate them, okay, and in this case, oh, I have more comments, Pause. the students mentioned what they understand about the reading, yes, very good, Sonia, Janet asking questions before while and post reading, very good, excellent, Janet, thank you, <laughs> sorry, okay, Pre-reading activities include brainstorming, considering illustrations and titles, skimming and scanning for structured main points, and etc. As we say, skimming and scanning are very important in before reading because they are going to let us have a bigger picture of the text that we're reading. Okay. While reading. Help students develop reading strategies, improve their control of the second language, decode problematic text passages. Okay, such exercises might include guessing word meaning from context clues, considering syntax and sentences structure and analyzing reference words, reading for specific pieces of information and learning to use the dictionary effectively. Okay, Kathy, thank you for your participation. While Find a story interesting. Okay, number three, post. Create a small story with a new vocabulary. Very good. Okay, guys. So in this case, while we do have also some activities that are going to be helpful for us to continue 
with the process of reading and that our students are going to be able actually to know what they're learning and to keep focus on the reading. Very good. After reading, post-reading exercises. Post-reading exercises, check students' comprehension, lead them to deeper analysis of the text. In this case, we can use questions like metacognitive questions. What do you understand about this? Why do you think this happens? What will make this different if the character were you? I don't know. Because the goals of most real world re readings are not to memorize an author's point of view or to summarize the text content. Second language reading must be beyond detail eliciting comprehension drills. It means that we need to have their opinion. They need to make this text your theirs and be able to explain it in their own words that is going to be that is going to mean that they actually learn and if we talk about the european frame and how we have some capacities and skills that we need to develop there are some kind of exercises that are going to be useful and they are going to have this capacity or a skill that we need to wait or we are waiting from our students for example on the following page is a reading text about learning styles. Don't read it. Instead, make a note about what you know about learning styles. In this case, the skill of reading that we're going to work is establishing context for reading. Look quickly, 25 seconds tops, at the reading text on the next page. What is it about? A skimming. We're not giving them a lot of time. Okay, quickly look again at the reading text on the next page. Which three learning styles are mentioned? A scanning, you need to find some information in very short time. Like this, we're going to have different exercises that are going to be for us, like able to know what skills we're teaching in our students, okay? Now, After reading, comparing the context they have read with their prediction. Very good, Rudy. Thank you so much. Yes. In this case, for example, you are going to be able to see an example. Pre-reading activities. Do you ever get bored at home? Would you like to have some fun? Your own mini greenhouse, you will need a plastic bottle. Some soil and seeds of your choice, tomatoes, corn, lentils, beans. Take the bottle, remove the label and cap. Pinch a few holes around the top of the top to keep the inside cold. No, yes, this inside cool. So place some soil at the bottom of the bottle, throw the seeds and sprinkle them with water. In a few days, the, seed, the seeds will start to vine water regularly. When your plants reach the top, cut the bottom of the bottle and transfer them in the pot or, a, or the garden. So in this case, for example, I have here pictures. In my pre-reading activities, I can start. What do you think is this reading about, for example? Look at the pictures. What is this about? Then skimming and scanning while reading. What do you think it's going to say? If we talk about a plastic bottle and throw seeds, what do you think this is going to be? And also, how many paragraphs are there? Count the number of lines. Look at the names of some, of some seeds. Find the opposite of worm. This is pre-reading activities. Also, what do plants need to grow? Name some vegetables and fruits. Do you have a garden at home? We start making them think or give us their opinion on tell or telling us stories or things that they actually know because yes, they know if they have a garden or they have pots or they have plants and they're going to be interested in doing what we're telling them to do. Okay, so. Just a minute. I am going to show you. Let's teach English. Working on a reading task. The homework for this class was for students to bring in pictures with examples of technology. They talk about them to prepare for the reading. 
Next, the teacher shows students how to make a graphic organizer to help them check their understanding of the reading. Good morning. Okay, we have the context of this video, okay? Now we are going to see in practice how we're going to teach reading. Good morning. Today, we are reading a story about technology. Talk about your pictures at your tables. Thank you for sharing your pictures. Do you like using technology? Mariam? Yes, I take my phone everywhere. Ah, me too. Anybody else? Julia? I love computers and I like to code. Ah. Some people do not have computers or internet. Vanuatu is a country in the South Pacific. Many people in Vanuatu do not have internet. In today's story, students in the United States want to help students in Vanuatu. Do you want to learn about this? I do. Let's start reading, then we will make pictures to help us understand. But first, let's look at the name of the story. Mimi, please read the name. Library in a Box Helps Students. Thanks. Now, Mariam, what do you see in the picture? I see a box. It looks like plastic. Yes, the library is in that box. How? Huh. Let's read the story, but first, let's learn some new words. Mariam, please read the first word. Connect to join two or more things together. Good. Group reading. The students read the story aloud or silently in their groups. They learn that the solar spell machine holds information from the internet on memory cards. Any mobile device can connect to it without wires. Solar spell gets its power from the sun. Let's make a picture to help us understand solar spell. First, I want to show the internet in a picture. Hmm, how can I do it? Show us in it. Yes. And what can you find on the internet? What helps you learn? Mariam? Books. Good. So let's put that in our picture. Draw this on your paper. This goes on a memory card. And where do they put the card? Mimi. They put the cards into the solar spell machine. Yes. Okay, now in your groups, keep going. What happens next? Draw more pictures. Sorry, I'm late. What are we doing? Who wants to tell her? You can do it as a group. Okay, Jamie and Mariam. This is solar spell. It's a library in a box. So now the students in Vanuatu like to learn with solar spell. Thanks. So what about making a picture like this? Does it help you understand the story? How? The story is a little difficult. The picture helps me understand. Yes, are there other times you use pictures in this way? Mimi. We need to look at pictures of new furniture. The pictures show us how to make the furniture. Yes, I use those pictures too. Summary. The teacher uses one student's late arrival as an opportunity for other students to summarize the story using their graphic organizers. Graphic organizers are especially helpful when a story or article discusses complex ideas or processes. Join us for Unit 5, Role Plays. Okay, now we have seen a model class about how to teach 
reading. Can you tell me in the pre or before reading activities, what did the teacher do? With which strategies she used? Okay, label them or number them in the chat. Before reading, what did she use or what did she do? Come on. Okay, she speaks, okay, she uses pictures, she speaks about, she asks questions, she, she starts brainstorming, right? Very good, Irma, thank you so much. What else, what else that she does? Predicting, very good, pictures, she activates their knowledge, excellent, previous knowledge by using pictures, good. And she starts making them aware about the situation, right? For example, do you use technology or do you think technology is good? Do you know that there is people that can't use technology, etc.? Okay, she activated her knowledge. Very good. Previous knowledge by using pictures. Previous knowledge. Very good. Excellent. Now, which activity, which activities she used while reading? Which activities she used for while reading? Vocabulary note, drawing, very good, summarizing, excellent. What else? Very good, Kathy, very good, Roxana. What else? What else? What else she does? Flashcards, graphics, very good, excellent. She started summarizing the reading using drawings, right? Okay, when the student arrives to the class, okay, explain to others, very good. And at the end, for post reading, what does she do? For post reading, what does she do? For post reading, how she uh, may, o sea, how she um, make sure that her students understood what they read. Who can tell me? What did she do? Paraphrasing. Very good. Explaining to others. Paraphrasing. Very good. Changing the words in your own words to explain because it's actually, uh, they say that it's very, it's better when you teach. It's the, it's the best way to learn when you teach somebody else what you're learning. Okay? Paraphrasing. Phrasing. Very good. Excellent. Okay. These videos are going to be in your classroom too. Okay. Attached to the task that you're going to have for this week. So what you're going to do for this week's, this week's task is that you are going to create a mini session of reading for reading comprehension. Okay. You don't need to have the capacities or skills, only the motivation, the body, and the evaluation that you will have while teaching this reading, okay? The process of the, the teaching that you're going to use for them to learn this reading. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Now, what happens as we spoke with young learners? When we teach reading to young learners, we have the problem that they read slowly, they don't have enough vocabulary, they get frustrated, they get bored, and they prefer to do something else. So how do we get children excited about reading? This is something that actually 
it's very difficult for most of our our teachers or for most teachers okay to get children excited about reading most of the time when you say hey guys they're going to read something i reading okay now tell me in your case how do you make your students excited about reading especially young learners come on tell me how is in your school how how do you do with your own students i want to know I read you in the chat. Come on, guys. How do you make your students excited about learning reading or about a reading? Reading about story tales. Very good, Irma. Thank, thank you so much. Delia, you start with games. Thank you, Delia. Excellent. What else? What else do you do to get your children excited about reading? Comics, very good. They love they love pictures. That's true. They love pictures. What else? What else do you do? With pictures, when they do some interactive activities, comics read about that topic they like. Very good. Looking at pictures and using puppets. Very good. Okay, costumes, very good. Kathy, costume puppets, very good. Reading about their interest, superheroes. Excellent. Yes, they enjoy a lot about these about these things. For example, to get a it's important, especially in young learners, role plays. Yes, get students involved, make the reading relevant to them. It means that we need to discuss or talk about topics that they enjoy and know. I can't have young learners learning about chemistry. They are not going to pay attention. Okay, use art, music, drama, and dance, okay? Connect reading to other skills. As we said, we can have a reading and then we can have a speaking, explaining the story. We need to connect them. Okay, give them opportunities to love reading. Okay, read to them. They enjoy, they enjoy a lot when you read to them. Okay, once I made some puppets and the puppets talk with my students. Very good, Delia. I love them. I love puppets. Comic stories. Watch and listen to Disney classics. Very good. Excellent. In the case of teenagers and adults, we can use some strategies that are a little more... Um, difficult or elaborated okay identify the prop the purpose of reading use efficient silent reading techniques skimming and scanning guessing semantic mapping or clustering and vocabulary analysis as i said the thing that i was showing you i am going to show you another one right now that i have here so you get to see exactly how do we present a reading using technology okay for example we have here this is the one that i'm working right now just a minute okay excellent for example look at this okay in this case this is a reading about celebrations around the world the first thing we worked, after, this is a B2 level reading, okay? This is actually preparation for FCE. So we have the vocabulary, the reading, grammar, listening, and speaking. This is all the unit that, this is the module objectives that they're going to work in this unit. So in this case, we worked with the prediction. I showed them the pictures. Okay, in picture number one, what do you think it's about? Picture number two, picture number three, picture number four. The, these four pictures, they only knew two, number one and number two, because they are like more common. Yeah, celebrations, very good. And they're more common. So they, you know, you have heard about Halloween. Even if you don't celebrate it, you have heard about Halloween and that's normal. Then you have El Dia de los Muertos. It's very famous in Mexico, especially. But for example, Las Fallas and Abhelija 
were not that famous because they don't know or we haven't heard about them a lot. So after this, we show them the vocabulary that we are going to work. In this case, for example, we have a scare away with a meaning. Será all the words that are going to be new for them with their own meanings, okay? With their own meanings. After we finish, we can actually review the pronunciation and start with the exercises after we read the, the story, of course. If you want to use more technology, you can use games, as you can see here, and also they can watch the video. For example, Las Fallas Festival is not famous. We don't know about it. Pumpkin House either. But if we get to see Las Fallas Festival, Las Fallas. Look at this. Las Fallas is undoubtedly one of the most unique and craziest festivals in Valencia, Spain. Las Fallas literally means the fires in Valencian. This festival is held annually in March from the 15th to the 19th. There are bonfires, fireworks and parades during the festival. Thousands of people come to Valencia for this festival of fire. The focus of the festival is the creation and then destruction of niños which are huge puppets or dolls made of cardboard, wood, and paper. These usually depict politicians and celebrities with the aim of making fun of them. There are nearly 600 niñots this year, and all but one, the winner, will be burnt on the last day of the festival. Hundreds of Valencian women wear their best traditional clothes and parade through the streets. They are known as fallas. Okay, for example, in this case, we are already giving them the context of the celebration that they are going to work. Because if they don't know Las Fallas, they haven't heard of it, they are not going to be interested, but they already watched the video, they know what is it about. And we can discuss, what do you think it's good about this parade? Do you think it's a good celebration? Okay, they do something similar in, Equ in Equator, but for New Year, oh, we didn't know that, San Juan. In the Peruvian jungle, really, I didn't know that. I'm going to look for it. People offer flowers. Excellent. Yes, we can teach them real stories, but not stories that are common because they know about Christmas. They know about Halloween, but maybe we can teach them something different. For example, my, my students were very excited when we work about these celebrations. They were very, very excited about the Inti Raini because they saw it in the Transformers movie. So most of them didn't know this celebration before the Transformers movie. Actually, when I saw it in Transformers, I almost cried. And when the Transformers spoke in Quechua, I was twice excited that Años Viejos Simonigotes se llaman. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Karin. Yes. So I was actually amazed with the Transformers speaking in Quechua. But the thing is that we can make them be, feel related or connected to these things as they did in the movie, for example. Every Peruvian has felt connected to that movie because the Transformers were in Cusco and Cusco is ours. So in this case, when we have these situations, when we connect with things, we feel emotions, good emotions, and we're going to want to learn more. We're going to want to know more. All my students know now what is Inti Raini because they find out, they decide researching because there was this parade in the movie that they didn't know about. And they are 15 or 16 years old. So these things are going to help us to catch their interest. Paréntesis, chicos, por si acaso, el link de la asistencia se encuentra en el chat en este momento. Por si seguimos escribiendo y se va más arriba, ya el link de la asistencia está en el chat. Pueden ingresar para que vayan llenando su asistencia. Recuerden que es muy importante la asistencia a las cuatro sesiones, aparte de las actividades y el examen aprobado, para que ustedes puedan recibir su certificación. ¿Ok? Thank you. Está también en WhatsApp. Thank, thank you, Karin. Sí, en WhatsApp, en el grupo de WhatsApp también lo pasan, pero creo que no todos están en el WhatsApp. Por eso que también lo estamos pasando por aquí. Ok, let's continue. Now, in this case, we can relate, we can 
make aware our students about things that they're going to feel connected to, okay? And after all these that we're doing, we are going to finish with open questions. What do you think of this? How do you get to this conclusion? What will you do in this case? How you will you make this situation different, for example, okay? Okay, guys. So that's what we have worked today that is actually teaching reading. I hope that it helps you. And what we're going to do right now is I am going to give you the link of the Padlet. In this, remember that we have a Padlet for session one, session two. Well, today we're going to fulfill session three. Okay, what we're going to do, we are going to add, we are going to add a comment about what do you think what do you think what what do you think now after the session that we have about teaching reading okay lo que pensabas antes lo que piensas ahora okay les voy a pasar el link por el chat. Vayan abriendo el de la asistencia, por favor, para que no se les vaya a perder. Lo que pensabas antes, lo que piensas ahora. Recuerden que cada lesson tiene una columna y todos los comentarios que vamos a hacer van debajo de la columna que corresponde. Ya hemos llenado la del número uno, ya hemos llenado la del número dos y ahora vamos a la número tres. ¿Qué pensaba antes y qué pienso ahora? acerca de teaching reading. Come on, y con eso terminamos. Sí, Delia, Katy, les estoy pasando ahorita el link del Padlet, que ya hemos hecho en Lesson 1 y en Lesson 2. Ya para terminar. Let's sum up. ¿Qué te llevas? ¿Qué pensabas antes que ahora crees que es diferente o que hizo cambiar tu opinión? Perfecto, ya veo que varios de ustedes ya están conectados. Vamos, ¿qué pensaba antes y qué pienso ahora? ¿Y por qué he cambiado de opinión? A ver, voy a volver a compartirlo porque no se me actualiza. Listo, ahora sí. Ya. Yeah. Motivation is the most important strategy without that the students can do much. Let them paraphrase what they learn from the text is also a plus. Very good. Thank you so much. Excellent.
that with patient we patients we can make a difference using strategies will help students feel confident and have them participate in activities very good we must consider different strategies for every single process to get our students motivated to read very good excellent nice Come on, guys, we only have two more minutes and then we go. Hurry up. We must consider different strategies for every single process to get our students motivated to read. Very good. In the three stages, we must get the students' participation. Yes, they must be connected all the time to the process. Very good. Before I thought reading was to improve your comprehension and to get your information, but now it helps you to discover new things, not only about the content, but also about my students' strategy. We used to get clear comprehension. Yes, very good. Remember that this goes to number three. Okay, in lesson number three. great okay guys that's it for today thank you so much for being with me with me today i'm sorry about my flu but i hope that you enjoy your class okay goodbye and i will see you next tuesday next tuesday is our last class okay don't forget that you need to have your task you i will upload the task and the videos and everything tomorrow okay